everybody, this is Rhino, and we are back with another episode of Plague, Inc. We are already on this screen. As you can see, I got the bioweapon done. I mostly, if we go to it, followed the tutorial that we did. Notice here, look, might as well point it out, that when unlocking that one on Mega Brutal, unlocked the last two cheats so we now have all of the cheats done so just to recap start in India and then immediately get these two as soon as you get some more DNA get these this one as soon as lethality goes up use this then this then this as soon as you see the lethality of uh, abscesses uh, this one and this one this one and this one and this one uh, then start focusing on transmissions and that's all you have to do for transmissions and then start down this path now I chose this then this because I had DNA and then I think I had enough for one of these then when I got my next set of DNA I think I had enough to do that and then I think I had enough to do that and at some point I did this, at some point I did this, and then this. So that's a little, a li some of that was out of order. I think I got genetic hardening a little bit earlier to focus on that. Uh, at this point, I think I might have thrown in an insomnia. Uh, which was probably a waste of DNA. I put these three in there, ready to go. And then, maybe I had enough DNA to do like this. I don't think I ever went to paralysis and coma. I'm just trying to balance out the, uh, balance out the, the cure progress which was dangerously close to getting to 100% for or threatening to get to 100% at least and so I was real careful on that have to focus on that some of the games I played certain countries just wouldn't get infected uh, and the one I won got was mostly by luck because 100% was not infected by the time I activated this it was it was Close to 99%. All the countries were infected, but not everybody. But I pulled the trigger, activated that because it increased its infectivity so much, and it, that got the last few people. But before I did that, I had already shuffled at least twice. I don't know if I ever got to a third shuffle. Um, some symptoms definitely mutated just randomly. Uh, I just left those alone so not none of these tutorials are really guaranteeing a win it's this game is too random it, any game that has random elements is going to definitely be uh, be a problem okay so here we are with our last plague the simian flu and I'm going to show you, follow the strategy guide. I mean, I guess it would have been smart to pretend like these were all my ideas and just ripped them off. But, I mean, I guess that is also technically plagiarism, isn't it? Uh, maybe just not mention the fact that... Uh, cost less to devolve but easier to cure. That's an interesting choice that he's going with Ion Surge, otherwise ATP boost, Aquasite, and Extremophile. Very standard and together strong increased DNA from colonies. So this is called the turtle strategy. According to the tutorial, they have not had a lot of success. It's this is gonna be pretty hard and it's gonna involve a lot of devolving. And we're not going to be cheating, even though we have all the cheats done. 
it is worth pointing out. I think if you to get the cheats unlocked, you need to do bacteria, virus, fungus, then skip the Norox worm, do the parasite prion, skip the necro virus, and then nano virus and bioweapon. Uh, those were the original plagues, and they've just kind of put the extra plagues that came later in the middle for this layout. I don't know why, but I don't think they would have been required to do the cheats. Obviously, simian flu isn't required, at least. Uh, so we're going to call this Mega Simian Flu. So I'm suspecting I'm not going to get this done, but we'll go through the strategy and try it. It wants us to start in the United States of America, which is new. And this is a turtle strategy. Wait a while, then evolve simian neurogenesis, followed by ape colonies shortly after that. Okay, why? Simian neurogenesis cost 15, I guess I have to wait to at least that point. So is it wait till we have like 15, wait until what? Well, it's not like they're gonna start working on the cure or anything. We could sit here for quite a while and just let it crawl up and infect it. Of course, photophobia mutated. Alright, let's start this. I need to get more. So I need one more DNA. There we go. Make a colony. States. Right. Make a call in the United States, then evolve social cohesion, cognitive shift, and education, and then organized travel here. Alright. I'm supposed to actually be devolving those symptoms. Let's see. Devolve every single symptom that mutates. It says in big bold letters. DNA. Organized travel cost 11. Alright. So now the next step. This part gets a little confusing, it says. So bear with me on this one. What you want to do is move apes from Mexico 
is to move apes from Mexico and only from Mexico if possible. Keep in mind, move apes from Mexico to these countries in this exact order. Interesting. So we want to devolve that. So next one on the list is the UK. So I suppose this is an interesting infection vector. This ought to be interesting next to Japan. You can't go the other direction, the much closer direction. It's not saying any specific amount is trying to go there, or any specific reason is trying to go there. Next one is the Philippines, which is right there. Madagascar. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> While moving monkeys, always remember to leave some DNA behind just in case a mutation shows up. Also, while moving monkeys, try to macro managing while evolving these abilities as well. Let's see. Logistics, seafaring, and horseback riding. Well, guess I should have read ahead. Logistics is seven things. So 
So I assume these are all gonna make it. I mean, I don't think that even if you sent one monkey, it's gonna die. Logistics. Seafaring for nine. That symptom taken off, yes we did. Voice back on eleven. And here it says later, as I'm reading ahead, sometimes your monkeys die when they reach their destination. Don't know if this is a glitch or what. But keep trying. To infect the list of countries by sending apes. Intelligent apes in the countries. Was that have to? Is that the goal? The only one. Let's see if we come over here to this side. Uh, I don't think we've gotten this one infected, but it looks pretty much like all the others have been. So, New Guinea, they didn't make it to New Guinea or I didn't send them to New Guinea. Let's see what it says next. done correctly, your map should look like this. Now that the monkeys have gone and reached a new country, it's finally time to build some colonies. This is my favorite colonies. Build, the, build a colony in these countries. Alright, so next move is to build a country in East Africa. Well, how would we do that? Seems like wherever they walk, they are increasing the number of intelligent uh, monkeys. So, apes, whatever. So it, it really does feel like this whole plan. New Guinea was already infected, but whatever. I missed some DNA there. Alright, so let's continue. Build the colony in East Africa. Wait. Next one is Central Africa. And then West Africa. I guess he really likes Africa. I guess it kind of makes sense. Thematically. And then Sudan. He's building a lot more countries than what I would, colonies than I would. India. 
Korea, finally getting out of Africa, China, and Indonesia. <laughs> gonna own all of Africa and start on Asia but notice I have 61 DNA here and it's he's still telling me to build more colonies look here it's 94 to create the next colony that seems insane gonna be 170 to make the next colony that makes no sense the last two colonies will cost a lot but yeah you're not joking but they will prove worth it yeah sneezing symptom mutated we don't want that about evolving these things I suppose. <sighs> so we're trying to get China and Indonesia still as colonies. still. This is particularly why I don't like doing active abilities is that they can just double in cost. Where are we really at as far as infected humans? Almost nothing. Barely a thousand. This is definitely a disease that a strategy that I haven't played a lot of is infect all the apes and not infect humans at all. Since it's asymptomatic in the sense that it's not showing any symptoms that seems like nobody cares about it. Devolving... You usually don't devolve this much. So what is the cost for the next colony? 306... DNA. It's in a massive amount of DNA. Just a massive amount of DNA. And sure, I guess these colonies will hand, them over, hand it over to you. Seems like they are an unlimited source for DNA. Why did he specifically pick these countries? I don't know. I think I'd want to keep them more spread out. Probably just picked countries that were right in the middle of the equator and all that. Nope, nope. Almost missed that one. Not paying enough attention. No enhancement. Devolve that.
done correctly, your map should look like this. Also, by doing this correctly, you should be able to infect every ape in the world. Hooray, no more stupid apes. Now that our colonies are all set up and ready for this city, let's move on to more ability. Evolutions evolve the following in this order. Let's see. When we look here, we almost have gotten to 100% of infections, but I think I need to play a little bit more. If I, that's my goal. Let's, this whole country needs to move downward, so. I'm just gonna go right this way with them. And I don't think anybody... Well. Some that have started to die. Interesting. Human infections is terribly low. Let's click this DNA as we wait for this. country that doesn't have monkeys in it. So we've got a small section of unintelligent monkeys, which I'm not going to worry about. Let's continue down the thing. Drug resistance one, genetic hardening one, and then two for 75. Wow. Is that thing it wants me to do is genetic reshuffle one, hardening, harden reshuffle, um, let's see, for 89 genetic reshuffle, wow, everything's so expensive. Shuffle for 125. Why are we even reshuffling? It's not like the cure is uh, here. why it's having me do the genetic reshuffles right now. 
but... Okay. The cure is at zero percent. Maybe he played poorly on this tutorial? And had to shovel, but I'm... It's not making any sense. We're at zero percent, why are we shoveling? Maybe it's some kind of way of saving DNA later. Alright, well that's genetic reshuffle too. And now we want Ape Rampage for 38. on devolving. Oh, that's cost 21 to devolve. It's getting dangerously close. Let's see, 72 DNA. It's feeling like we might stand a chance to actually win on this strategy. Playing slow, slow and steady. It's probably going to get us a really bad score, but it might it guarantee a victory. Alright. Drug resistance 2. Now it wants us to get heat resistance 1 and 2. And then cold resistance 1 and 2. So it definitely does seem like spending that extra 300 uh, DNA has paid off significantly. Mega Simeon Flu has escaped from the lab. That is the first movement of it. I imagine in the tutorial creator's game it has been, let's see, it would have that happened a lot earlier. Let's see, I bet that's when, why all the reshuffles. Okay, so that's the last one on that step. Trust me, I've done two games of this strategy and was able to evolve all these without being bothered by Genesis Labs. Well, first of all, you only play two games and while that was somewhat clear, act close to what my experience said, wasn't exactly. But now moving closer and closer to the end stages, but right now, keep devolving those mutated symptoms, evolve the following in this order. Water 1. 8. Let's see, let's take a look. 
look at the world from the ape side it's 100 percent effective from the human side there's still a lot to be done and we're now we're going to create the planet of the apes just infecting apes How much was water? One, 18 points. So water one, air one, water two. gets really really easy with the space park. Uh, it goes from being a game where you can really make a mistake to not making a mistake at all. Last move for this step, spin the 50 for the humanoid, the hominid bridge. After evolving hominid bridge, a lot of red bubbles are going to show up. You might want to pause the game just to catch up and pop up, pop all of them. You can also add this part, stop devolving uh, symptoms. You can stop now. You can also wait till the whole world is infected, but where's the fun in that? Seriously though, I haven't tried it, but I think you can wait a while for more infection. Uh, it's also saying ape migration, scouts, and pathfinders is the next step. There we go. Just keep your eye on that first bubble. All those were like one. bunch of red things popping up that they're not really that important. Headache symptom mutated. Now is a good time to check out the humans. Every single country is infected uh, now as far as humans. But we are only at about 25%. Let's see. The abilities he wants is Ape Migration, Scouts, and then Pathfinders for 61. These abilities will concentrate all the world's intelligent apes into colonies, which will make it easier for you to move them to crush genes. Uh, what are they called? Genesis Labs? Yeah. So I need 61 DNA. Cure is still at six at zero percent. Now everybody should be moving into a colony. Uh, 
We are now at the end stages of the strategy and this part gets complicated real fast. If you're not able to react quickly to drones and gene slips, uh, all your hard work will be turned to monkey poo, so keep your eyes and ears focused on the part of the labs making beeping sounds when they show up. This is what the late stages of my game looked like. His cure was at 50%, he had 129 DNA, and he's definitely playing on the cell phone. Uh, now, aim to get these symptoms first. Photophobia, subconductive bleed. Let's see, photophobia, subconjunctive bleed, images, um, things that would slow down the cure, in other words. Starts to work on the cure. are going to be coming from the labs, so as soon as we start seeing labs, we destroy them. Pause the game. This image. Next we want blindness. Land borders is way too long far for that. Meningitis has been evolved. You might have some luck and not have to evolve some of these symptoms. At this point, you want to evolve lethal symptoms. Total brain death sounds cool, but those neuro enhancements will boost the cure rate, so you might want to back off from that one. Here's the most viable symptoms for lethality. Let's see. Hemorrhagic shock. Internal hemorrhaging. Really? Hydrocephalus. So it wants us to go in here in this section and just keep keep it. Uh, we still have 30% of the world needs to be infected. I'm not sure this is the right move. I agree. Need to keep an eye on the humans. Well, actually, you know, killing people is probably fine. Because they're working on the cure now, and if I'm not careful, but they are going to get to it. All that reshuffle and stuff. Uh, target apes in China? I think not. Thank you. 
somewhere. I think I may have lost a colony because of that. Which, you know, that might really turn into a big problem. Let's see. Magic Shock is one of the next ones. Too many people are dying too fast. This is not gonna work. Have I hit the limit? Is that what it is? I think I might have hit the limit. Actually, yeah. Isn't that the fact that there's just zombie panic combo? Mass hysteria claims that the megasimian flu turns people into zombies. Scientists waste time investigation. Investigating? Oh, I've never seen this one before. What a way to end the series <laughs> with just a zombie panic coming up. I think it's time to kill these people because I think I've I've kill infected the maximum and this is how we made the planet of apes. Uh, I had forgotten. I don't think you can get 100% infected. I just don't think it's possible. Maybe we can. Almost missed that. Well, put some DNA into it. Why not? Really, there are no healthy people left in the world. So we could infect everybody. Well, gee. It looks like we're set to wipe out all of humanity. I don't think you're supposed to be able to wipe out all of humanity. Mega increase in lethality. 
we get down to zero. We're getting dangerously close to a few thousand. the planet of human the planet of the apes we destroyed let's see almost all of the humans victory and that is great news that was certainly a turtle game at 2437 days we got to a complex simian flu. Cure got to 50% on Mega Brutal. We got 476,880 points and five biohazards. So I think the biohazards are have to be based on the amount of DNA we collected because we collected a lot. Even in fast forward mode here, it would take forever for this to recap. So that is Mega Simian Flu. So that strategy worked. Finally a strategy that works. And that means we have a biohazard sign for every single main plague. We have done every single scenario on casual we could. If I wanted to play more, uh, let's just review and wrap up this series. Uh, right now if I wanted to play more I could definitely on these scenarios but these scenarios some of them were great and really changed things but some of them barely affected anything because there was just all this internal numbers that we never got to see I'd really like to be able to see those numbers so I can see the complexity that is in this game for myself because right now this game is very very simple from my perspective from the player's perspective it's just super simple and I played this in a very strange way and it has caused us to play a lot of games of Plague Inc in a row in a short amount of time where more often I would be playing this on a cell phone or when I have a free time. Certainly I would come back and play Plague Inc. again. Uh, but I'd only play like one game and that's it. So we've unlocked the cheats. You, We have the immune strain where it's impossible to find a cure. The hidden strain, the government never discovers it. The unlimited strain where you get unlimited DNA. The turbo strain where you start with 100% infected in your country and then by beating the main things which were never really laid out but I'm pretty sure you need to beat bacteria, virus, fungus, parasite, prion, nanovirus and bioweapon on brutal to unlock the main cheats and mega brutal to unlock the extra cheats. I don't think you ever really have to beat simian flu, necrovirus, or norexworm to affect the cheats. Um, let's see. But we have the shuffle strain. All evolutions are mi mixed up. And the lucky dip strain where you start with five uh, random evolutions. I'm not sure what other cheats you could really include. That's pretty much all the cheats you'd want. Cheats are kind of just scenarios but toward you, towards your benefit, where scenarios are almost always to your, not to your benefit. So let's get in here and just look at the... We'll start in our favorite country, Southeast Asia, one last time. Um, this is kind of interesting. We started with five random things and they are all mixed up. 
this would be air uh, water one this would be water two and this would be extreme bio aerosol this would be air and it's just all mixed up wow what an what an interesting that cheat really does make it more interesting because you you would have to work your way towards the thing you want by going through things you probably don't want so like if I get this then I get livestock too here <laughs> very strange the all of these things are in different places and there's no guaranteeing of actually I need to come back here and let's play the lucky strip let's exit to the menu and play the shuffle strain with the unlimited uh, unlimited strain and start that one just to see better how this all works so shuffle strain is shuffled still so you have water one this time that goes to livestock one that goes to blood two then extreme zoo analysis right here which is way better than anything else to do that I mean just look it's all random it's not crossing the pages though so these are just uh, transmissions so here you have extreme bio aerosol if you found it quickly and got that you wouldn't really need to go get this one this one or this one you probably still would but wouldn't need to uh, extreme zoo analysis you get that real early you probably don't need sheep or bird or uh, insect or rodents uh, well not insect All of these are in different places, so just randomness, the randomness here, it almost feels like this should be the default, um, or um, this would definitely spice things up if three out of five games were random like this, just, oh, I, you have no idea. I really feel like they need to go more in a storyline. Um, I'm thinking kind of Plants vs. Zombies 2 with their newest updates where they fix things that were really bad. Where um, you just have a whole line here of certain number of games to play and the scenarios should be in that line so level 1-1 one, one would be the bacteria level 1-2 would be the virus level 1-3 would be the uh, fungus same for the basic things but by, after you've gone through the basic things like 2-1 should be a scenario and then 2-2 two, two should be the uh, bacteria but with something randomized or changed uh, to keep things really like lay down a path of how to spice this game up and have games that are back to back and not be exactly the same um, let's see so yeah that random cheat definitely should be used a lot more it should not be hidden really behind the mega brutals the shuffle strain cheat should be a major part of the game uh, lucky dip strain same thing if you went a level wise that would make total sense that at times you're gonna get ran five random evolutions at the beginning early games that would really help and sometimes having a turbo strain sometimes having a hidden strain or immune strain or even unlimited strain every now and then 
would be that. Like the whatever the boss level of the first grouping should be unlimited strain. We're going to give you unlimited DNA, but it's going to be difficult, so you're going to have to learn how to play fast. Um, I really dislike the way this game set up, started out, where you had to beat bacteria on normal to play virus. That's not great. Now, I'm saying do a level 1-1, one, one, but I think probably you should be a little bit nicer and have all of the plagues uh, be unlocked at the very beginning. I think you gotta start right there. So I'd say basic bacteria is 1 1, virus 1 2, fungus 1 3, parasite 1 4, prion 1 5, nanovirus 1 6, bioweapon 1 7, and then you go no axwrap 1 8. 1 9 and 1 10. So your first 10 levels all should be unlocked. 111 should be the unlimited strain on bacteria with a scenario that makes it difficult. Uh, and 2 2 should be the next scenario where you still really start uh, integrating scenarios. If you did only one scenario, for each of those 10, then it would probably be too much gameplay. We played this game, I think, too much. Uh, it hasn't been varied enough. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, if you only did one every round, and each round was 10, you're talking 180 games of, uh, of Plague Inc. That's way too much. I think 50 is probably a better goal, and I think we've done closer to 80 uh, on this series. There's really nothing super wrong with... Plague Inc. I like it. I, I'll play it again. What am I doing? I don't have any custom scenarios. We never did the speedruns. Speedruns, again, should be in there, but maybe that should be the boss run of one, one round one, level one, is uh, do a speedrun with an unlimited strain. How fast can you win? That would be cool. And then set a specific thing. Tutorial, uh, it's like just opens early access page, so no tutorial yet. Uh, that would be helpful. I think it's time with Plague Evolved. I think you made a mi the creators made a mistake calling it Plague Evolved instead of just calling it Plague Inc. Uh, again and having it be the Windows version because they need to probably start thinking about what the sequel to the series is. Uh, and it can have all these plagues, but it'd be nice if you could double that and think of some different things. What, if you go back on my series, you can see some ridiculous things I've suggested, like why not fantasy things like werewolves and vampires and all of that. You could do a whole monsters pack and have plagues based on that. You could, uh, otherwise you're going to have to think really hard. If he's covered, the game has covered all the real things. The, the fake things like the Norax worm is not real. The Necrovirus is not real. The Simian flu is not real. Uh, everything else is a real plague that is a real danger but you've cut the game has covered all those so it needs to start going into evolve evolved could easily be okay we've created these whole new types of plagues that are totally different uh, they probably should say like bacteria evolved see if they can reuse that and then the bacteria vault has a whole different set of transmissions, a whole different set of um, 
different set of symptoms, a whole different set of active abilities. All of that stuff has been played out a lot as far as all the symptoms, active abilities, transmissions. All that needs to be set back to the old set plagues and we need a whole new set of everything. They could play with time. They could play with maps on this. If we go back to Pangea and play plagues on that map, things would be very different. If we go to some futuristic version where there's 35 billion humans on the planet, things would be really different. Uh, if we, in some future version, have all animals are dead, well, yeah, that would definitely change things. There's a lot of different ways they could do this. Uh, I won't get too much into my... I, I ranted for at least one episode, if not two, about how their overlay looks really good if they were going to make a game like Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. If they were going to put Plague Inc. to the side and make a game like that, that would be that would fulfill my own personal dreams too but that really has nothing to do with Plague Inc. does it other than that I've enjoyed this gameplay enough that and I think the creators are good enough that they could do that uh, what else what else is there really to say about Plague Inc. it's fun it's just don't play it like me that's really the the long and the short. We never played multiplayer. I probably never will. I don't. What would multiplayer really be? It doesn't make any sense to see. Nothing. Okay. There is no multiplayer. I don't know how you'd even play multiplayer. Uh, have competing plagues try to kill people? Try to infect the same planet people? Uh, uh, have a human side to it? That would certainly flip the book. If we have played Plague Inc., if Plague Inc. 2 is we're going to play as the humans, uh, plagues are going to show up and we're going to try and cure them. And then there's going to be all kinds of cures coming about. That would totally add something major to the game. And that probably is the most logical of my suggestions. Is play as the humans. Play, try to cure the thing. This game is somewhat morbid, and when I have described it to multiple people, I go, Oh yeah, I'm playing this Plague Simulator game where I try to kill all the people on the planet. And when you tell that to people who don't understand video games and how silly it is, and the, they don't understand the artistic, uh, the artistic silliness or, or how detailed this game is, it sounds like you're a lunatic when you try to describe this game to people you, and you say oh yeah it's really funny it's really fun it's like it's if you it's equivalent to trying to explain what Mortal Kombat is to somebody who doesn't play video games it's real hard to not come off as uh, a lunatic when you say oh yeah I love this fighting game where you do horrible fatalities that are grotesque and gory uh, it's hard to explain that there's comedy in it that there's education in Plague Inc. a lot uh, I tried to do a lot of episodes in this series that were informative and educational I don't know if I said a single thing that was correct I probably said a few things that were correct I don't know if that helped or not we kind of slid off those at the end and just focused on tutorials of how to beat the Mega Brutal which we got some of them done and some of them we didn't. Sorry about the ones I didn't get done that where I couldn't be better and more helpful. But I don't know what else to do. Uh, the link here for the cell phone version is fine. The Facebook and Twitter and the G and the email integration, all that stuff probably needs to go away. Uh, it's not a good idea to encourage people to share their scores on Twitter or, or Facebook. Nobody likes that. It's it's not good manners. 
and I think just the last thing we need to talk about is the very first thing we talked about the menus the menus are just awful here we are at the main menu of Plague Inc it does not say the title anywhere we have to click single player which then gets us to the, a second menu which is different from the main menu for no reason you could have just put it right here I know I've said this before then from one of these menus you go to main game and it's a third screen which it really didn't need to be you could have easily had the main menu the single player menu and then the plague selection menu all in one uh, even if this was the second screen when we select the plague and go to this or to a fourth screen for no reason that probably should stay with the plague selection screen for a modified genetic code and then you have your fifth screen with the dif difficulty for no reason throw a little craziness into it let's put a pop-up of cheats when we click the cheats there's your sixth screen right there which is on top of everything else uh, not helpful and then your seventh screen is a different format all of these have been pretty different formatted for your name so you're talking six to seven screens before you can start the game that's terrible and where does it say Plague Inc. on any of these? Nowhere. You want, you want to make your game so almost any random screenshot would be recognizable. And it kind of is if people know Plague Inc. But if they don't, it just looks like a biohazard sign. Or it just looks like a world map. They could be from any game. Let's see, let's look at the options. At least the options here are pretty well laid out uh, they seem to have spent some time on that uh, font mode so you could get bigger fonts might be helpful uh, probably don't really need it what would I give this game I, I don't give games ratings but uh, number ratings because I think they're dumb so I don't, I'm not going to say that. I was about to give it a number rating. But this is a good game. I would play it every now and then if I wasn't making a YouTube series. Uh, but I would not play it as much as this. So I recommend people play it every now and then. Anyways, that's the end of this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Things are definitely changing on my channel. Uh, this is with the end of this episode this is the official end of series two on my channel so I've already done series one and series two is now over series three is gonna be a little bit weird because it's gonna probably start in the middle of a lot of games see the series now are for old games so I may not be releasing uh, three different old games Monday through Friday. I may only be releasing one and Hearthstone. So two. Uh, whatever the next game is going to be. I may only be releasing Hearthstone. New games get bumped to the beginning of the list. So I'm re releasing The Witcher 3 probably still now. Uh, unless I beat it already which would be amazing uh, it just gets put out as soon as possible I've even thought about releasing it every day but I think that's probably too much for most people uh, any other new games I get and want to play uh, those will also be released out early if there's other reasons why a game needs to get pushed out early it will get pushed out early so you're gonna see a lot less uh, structure for new things or things that need to get put out so definitely make sure you subscribe to my channel definitely make sure that you uh, follow and check back uh, 
every now and then. Even if you're subscribed, unless you go to your YouTube page and my subscriptions, uh, you you might fall off the the wagon, as it were, to see new episodes. If you don't watch an episode for a couple days, YouTube thinks you're not interested. They stop sending you emails. They stop putting up notifications on your cell phone. Uh, all of it is really weird. The only way you can guarantee you're going to see the new things are to be subscribed to my channel and then go to my subscriptions either on the YouTube page on a computer or my subscriptions on your cell phones YouTube players tab uh, so make sure you subscribe also I'd ask you to like this video uh, none of my series have gotten enough views in my opinion uh, a lot of my series have not gotten really any views for some episodes and that's a little disappointing I'm doing a lot of these old games and I realize there's not a huge interest in them but I would recommend that you like ask that you like them ask that you share them with your friends let's see if we can get everything above at least 300 views for every single episode uh, and comment on videos would be helpful if you see something that I should have done forgot to do did wrong let me know as long as it's polite the comments are great they help me out uh, even if you just want to say good game or thanks for playing or or cool or whatever those comments are great too um, if you want to support me which would be greatly appreciated I'm a brand new youtuber although not brand new as of this year I'm a brand new youtuber uh, I have I am it is my only job I've gotten about five dollars theoretically in ad revenue in three months uh, and for that even to get reported as income to the IRS you have to make ten dollars in a year which I'll probably do that but the bigger number and the more important part of that is you have to earn at least a hundred dollars for before YouTube will actually sit, pay you a penny so you have to he make at least a hundred dollars before you get that hundred dollars if you make ninety nine dollars you don't ever see any of that so it's an, I have not earned actually anything just in theory I've earned so, so much for ad revenue so how you can help me with that is don't install ad blockers watch click on the ads if they're relevant uh, buy things from the sites that the ads are selling because that somehow helps too the whole system is very weird uh, if you really want to uh, but all of that as far as dealing with ads is a really poor way to support me there is a much easier way to support me all you have to do is donate directly to me which YouTube now allows click on my name Rido and on the YouTube that should take you to my main YouTube page if for some reason that doesn't work type in the name Rido into YouTube scroll down until you see my icon uh, scroll down until you see a page that has well over 500 videos posted uh, and that'll be my channel when you get to my main channel on the right is a blue button that says support this channel and you just click there and through Google Wallet you donate money directly to me and that is the real way to help me I could definitely use the help I've just had to buy a brand new computer so a thousand dollars plus in the hole already just to maintain and keep doing this and play The Witcher 3. Definitely go check out The Witcher 3. Definitely go check out my other series. Uh, there's a lot of them They're, and they all need views so when you're at my main YouTube page there's a tab up there that says playlist. There's a playlist for every game. You just click that you can watch from the beginning to the end. Uh, 
So yeah, donations are the real way. I really need them. I really would appreciate them. This is my only job. This is what I do uh, for about 10 to 12 hours a day, every day. Uh, pretty much without taking any days off. Uh, if you want to follow or friend me on social media sites like Twitter or Google Plus or uh, Facebook or Tumblr even, uh, I have links down below. Now it helps me with each of those sites. If you follow me on Twitter, that's probably the best place where I'm going to be most active. But I need people to click on my fan page on um, Facebook and like that. I'm trying to get 500 likes on that. I uh, I need people to follow me on Twitter. I guess I want people to follow me on Tumblr and reblog me. I don't understand how it works. I just set it up because I, it was easy to do so. I probably need some comments and explanations on how to use Tumblr better. Uh, also, I have my blizzard.net uh, ID there, battle.net ID, where you can friend me on that and show up as a, and I will at some point possibly play you on Hearthstone on one, one of my episodes. Uh, and you can friend me on Steam, which would be cool too. Uh, if you have any extra games and you donate them to me on that Steam account, that comes close to guaranteeing that a series will get made for that game. So if you want to see me play a specific game and for any reason you have an extra copy or you just uh, really want to be generous and donate that way, that would be uh, really helpful. I have very limited income, which is basically none at the moment, so buying a bunch of random games on Steam, even through Steam sales, isn't going to be the easiest of things to do. Um, so that's a different way you can support me. Um, also I'm thinking about maybe doing good old games too so let me know in the comments if you want me to uh, release what that profile is but yep yeah, this is the long wrap up of the series that's usually how it goes I want to again thank you for sticking through with this and thank you for watching uh, these episodes I really did enjoy this game I don't think we'll be coming back to it until there's been some major updates. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and have a good evening.